Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to my Venus series. Okay so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the self-worth of Venus in Gemini but this video can also resonate with you if you happen to have Gemini ruling your second house as well. Now before we do get started if you would like to know more information all about the Venus signs, the Venus houses, the Taurus house and the second house within astrology then I have created a Taurus season slash Taurus archetype ebook so what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a link to that ebook in the description box below so that you can pick up your copy today. So with all those introductions out of the way Venus and Gemini slash Gemini ruling the second house let's do this. Okay, so firstly, let's start off by explaining the second house within astrology. Now, the thing about the second house is that it can provide us with an indication into how our identity and security is formed based upon the things that we attach ourselves to, whether these things be money, materials, or people, and even when it comes to our own beliefs and so on. Now, it's also the second house that can be viewed as representing the stage or time in our lives by which we really become more consciously aware of our bodies. And according to Howard Sasportaz, from around six months old, we start to recognize that we have a body, but then research also suggests that we start to become more self-aware from about 18 months old. Therefore, it is from the second house that we start to build upon what or who we are based upon the material world and how we reflect on that material world. So you could say that the products and the items and the materials that you own or that you possess, they are essentially a reflection of yourself. So for example, they can reflect your style, they can reflect your taste, they can reflect your likes and your dislikes, all of these very Phoenician things, but they can also reflect your financial situation and also your skills and your talents. So for example, buying a new pair of shoes that is worth $20 over a new pair of shoes which is worth about $80, then it's going to reflect more your own financial situation in that way. And would you really own that certain new pair of shoes if you were not skilled in the job that you work at in order to buy those shoes in the first place? Basically, it is from the second house that we form our own sense of self-worth or value. So what do you value? Who do you value? Do you value yourself and others? And what do you base yourself a worth upon? Self-worth upon and why? So ultimately, this is about you going outside of yourself in order to locate what's going on within yourself. Alright, so what we notice with those of you who have your Venus in Gemini or Gemini ruling the second house, in which I'm going to refer to you as Gemini throughout this video, but we notice that how you were provided for, it might have been a bit scattered, a bit restless and a bit inconsistent. So for example, maybe you moved location at a very young age or whenever you were younger. You know, maybe the family just decided like, we're just gonna get up and move due to financial situations, due to the financial providers in that way. Or maybe your financial providers were in and out of new jobs or ways to earn money in order to provide for you and your family. Or maybe it's simply that your financial providers, they couldn't focus or concentrate long enough in order for certain materials and items to actually materialize for yourself. So, you know, maybe a financial provider, they would spend their finances or their savings faster than they actually made it. Or maybe they just got really curious about the new items and materials that really were quite superficial in nature, but yet they didn't seem to question this approach. So there could have been certain things that they saw as more valuable or more worth their time, but it could have just been that those things were actually superficial in nature, but yet their curiosity got the best of them. And so they could have, you know, 
wanted to then buy that new thing or that material that really it's like do we really need this <laughs> still like i said they might not have questioned this about themselves i mean if it made logical sense to them then they would buy or purchase that new coffee holder for example that oh look at this coffee holder you know it's so great and it has this little section here for the biscuits to go into oh this is so great but it's like do like do you really need that <laughs> but the thing is is that it made logical sense to them and so they might have bought it then again maybe your financial provider was really adamant towards you doing really well in school so passing your exams you know when it came to your studies either that or they were much too focused on your other siblings if you had any other siblings gemini maybe more of the financial provider's curiosity just went towards other siblings so to speak or maybe they would communicate with you openly about your schoolwork and express the importance of getting an education. So basically what can come with this placement is that there might have been a strong emphasis on communication and intelligence and schoolwork and performing well in school but at the same time it could have also been that most of their focus went towards your siblings. But still this whole you know focusing on performing well when it came to studies this might have been really important to you as part of your own value system, Gemini. However, however, things still might have been inconsistent. So the moment that a financial provider would actually sit down with you, you know, to help you, for example, with your schoolwork, but before you knew it, they were getting distracted by something else, by someone else, by other financial matters or by other things that had to be provided for and into the home. Maybe it's just that before you knew it, before you could actually grab their attention, they were already away. So perhaps you had to get your own thinking cap on Gemini. You sort of had no other choice but to obtain the financial and security sort of successes that you wanted using your brain, using your mind. So you might have then searched after different ways to earn money. You would think about the job that you really wanted from a really young age for example. I mean if you do also have a Taurus rising here with this, okay, if you have Gemini on the second house and a Taurus rising, you might have been born into instinctively accumulating materials and wealth in the first place. So yes, you might have been able to come up with many ideas as to how to earn a living, as to how to make money, or it might have been that you and the siblings, so you and your siblings, they were a part of it. Maybe you've worked before with your siblings, maybe you came up with different strategies to earn money with your siblings. It could also extend to the cousins as well, to the aunties and the uncles as well because of Gemini here. So maybe it could have been a matter of different collective minds coming together and networking and connecting and then being able to bring in some finances um, for yourself and for them as well. Perhaps a sibling would tell you about a new job opportunity and you would apply and then you'd get the job. Or maybe a neighbour as well could come into play here. A neighbour could tell you word of mouth word of mouth through a certain job opportunity, you would apply and then you get the job. It might even be a matter of during your early schooling here. So whenever you were in school, you and your classmates were just putting your minds together, putting your brains together and just communicating your ideas and your thoughts and opinions about the ways that you want to earn money. So, oh, this is what I want to be when I grow up, that type of thing. And so you might have just really been inspired by your classmates. Maybe a certain subject at school just grabbed your attention or your curiosity. And so you thought to yourself, yes, this is what I want to be whenever I grew up. However, however, this same Gemini energy can be changeable, okay? And so you may be the type of Gemini who was a little bit indecisive when it came to your certain options and how to make money. But it was this back and forth process, you know, of thinking over, oh, what I want to do, not want to do, back and forth you go. That in itself can actually help you become 
much more clear as to what it is you want to achieve financially and physically because what you realize through that you realize what you want and what you don't want however what you're also coming to learn is how to actually stabilize this energy if you do wish for something of value to materialize Gemini I mean yes you might be the type of Gemini who is curious about many qualities in a partner for example but then when you get bored or restless with that partner on to the next partner you go because they're so much more desirable you might be pretty superficial in your dealings with people in this way then again you might be the type of Gemini who just can't seem to ever land on your feet or set your foundation down anywhere because you're just used to moving you're just used to changing you might not rest until you find that person or that job that just makes you feel like you can relate with that you just have this desire Gemini to accumulate and obtain more and more knowledge and so this attitude could lead to you saying I refuse to settle you know I refuse to settle because you're almost just looking at all those superficial little things that you're like no 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 so whilst your flexibility can be really good for you it can also be detrimental see you might find it difficult to settle in one place for too long and you also might find it difficult to let go of homes or products or materials that still grab your curiosity whilst the whole world and its mother is telling you that it's no good for you Gemini so whilst you seek change and fresh experiences right you also aren't going to be swayed by what others expect or want from you now this in itself can show us that Gemini you value your thoughts and your opinions on how you choose to live your life and nobody else's it just seems as if your curiosity here Gemini Gemini it might be the key here when it comes to how you accumulate your security when it comes to your materials and your finances but the key also lies in your intellect your mindset and your straight up logic because if it doesn't make logical sense to you Gemini then you know you won't do it you won't buy that new thing yet the things that you decide to purchase or own might make logical sense to you but not to other people so what I would suggest here Gemini is just really taking a look at all these things you know addressing your avenues of money addressing your materials addressing how you do that so do you feel like your personal income for example do you feel like that supports you and your desired lifestyle do you feel content with what you already have Gemini or do you find yourself just continuously restlessly like in search for more and more and more and more things and if that's the case why so with this information in mind Gemini when it comes to your own self-worth you might base it upon how intelligent you are and if for example you get something wrong or you muddle your words maybe your facts are incorrect okay which we can all be wrong yes we all have the tendency of being wrong you just might sort of laugh it off and say oh I'm so stupid you know or ha ha did, did I just say that you know you basically can downplay your own intelligence and act like a fool Gemini then again you could also base your self-worth on being the fool being the trickster being the con artist seriously you could be the type of Gemini who would play pranks and tricks on other kids growing up you would maybe join in with your siblings and your cousins to play tricks and pranks it might even be Gemini that information was just a bit inconsistent from your financial providers towards you maybe they would downplay right they would downplay their intelligence around you and make it out that 
Oh, Gemini, you have no idea what you're talking about. No, you know, the, the adults are talking here, Gemini. We are sorting this out. But you know, you're the child, you know. You just go run along there, Gemini. Do more childlike, fun, interesting, engaging things with your brothers and sisters and your cousins. All whilst you smelt the BS. You weren't stupid. You know, you knew you weren't, weren't stupid. You know, you might have just picked up on all the words but no action from these financial providers. You might have picked up on the whole saying of, you know, doing one thing and then doing the complete opposite later on towards your, your financial providers in this way. Or maybe they would do the same nervous laugh that you might do as a way to keep out of trouble within the material world and within your relationships. Basically, Gemini, you might have learned from your financial providers how to be the typical two-faced Gemini who is here today and gone tomorrow, never in the same place, place as we left you from before. So, when it comes to your self-worth, how do you use your mind to feel valued and appreciated? Do you just brush things off like they aren't a big deal? And do you become restless and easily bored within the job that you're earning money in or within the relationships that you flutter in and out of? Is it maybe that conversation and communication is important to you in any relationship that you form or within any job or role that you go into? And if it is, rather than shaking it off like it's some big practical joke, to actually allow for the more serious part of you to come out and openly discuss what you want or seek from that relationship or from the way in which you earn a living. With that being said, right, if it is that you wish to start a new course, a new subject, or you wish to get into a new job, for example here, right, so it could be educational purposes, it could be financial purposes, um, trying to learn to focus and concentrate your mind on starting these things for yourself, but to also be aware of how you will be impacted on the opposite side of that. So what I mean by this is, say for example, you want to start a new sort of job or you want to get into a new course, look at the resources that you already have, assessing how these resources will then be impacted by the change that you seek to make. Now, with that being said, of course unexpected things are going to happen. I mean, for example, you changing your current position to go to another position because that's what you want to do, resulting actually possibly in that new position leading to you being laid off from that position. Well, that's a difficult sort of plan, okay? That's hard to plan for. You know, companies can just go bust, bankrupt like that, and you don't see it coming. But it's doing what you can. To go over, for example, any unfinished business that you have before you enter into a new experience. To look at what has already come before in that way and to really assess how all these things in the material world will be impacted by this change that you're wanting to make. Ultimately, Gemini, when it comes to your self-worth, you are learning a thing or two over where exactly you're placing your mind. Does your job, for example, does it provide you the mental stimulation you desire or is it that you seek after a job that does provide that mental stimulation? Is it that you really enjoy learning about how things work? And if you enjoy learning about how things work, to use that curiosity for your own sense of security and financial successes. And when it comes to the relationship side of things here, Gemini, well, questioning which relationships really can help you grow, uh, which relationships can keep you learning, you know, keep you mentally stimulated in that way. And you know, who are the people in your life that challenge you intellectually? But also, also, do you share your lightheartedness to any equation? Because the thing is, is that you may have a tendency of potentially neglecting the thoughts and opinions of others because 
you want to be valued for what you want to say, right? You basically want to be valued for your own communication of how you speak the truth. But what I'm kind of trying to get at here is that whenever it comes to your relationships, rather than sort of being flighty about it or getting restless or bored about it and just shooting off to another direction because you don't want to listen to that person or that situation, but to actually engage with the other person, right? Now, you don't have to be all deep and, and everything else because yes, Gemini energy is more flighty, it's more superficial, um, you don't want to go so emotional into things and you don't have to, but it's just like, you could say a simple matter of words, a couple of words that can reassure someone or it can make that person see things from a different perspective. Not necessarily saying that you want to change that person's mind, but to just say what you logically think of a situation. So from you saying that, that can actually then help your partner or help maybe, for example, when it comes to work and things like that. You providing your opinions, you expressing what you want, what you think, basically. But at the same time, also being open to other people's ways of thought, right? But just to provide your perspective can bring this lightheartedness to any situation and it can actually result in you being appreciated for that. You know, where maybe you're the type of Gemini who just seeing a smile on your partner's face or making them laugh or going into work and feeling like you're light on your feet, like you're not bringing your crap from home, you know, all of the other things from other areas of your life even, not just from home, but bringing all those heavy things into work might be something that you're not about. And so from you coming in with more of a lighter kind of feel to things, that in itself can actually brighten up other people's days and that also in turn might make you feel good. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes the self-worth of Venus and Gemini slash Gemini ruling the second house. Now, if you do happen to have any of these placements, I would like to hear from you in the comment section because there's not really a lot of information out there that exists when it comes to self-worth in astrology. So yeah, any insights would be much, much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then go right ahead and click the subscribe button and I will be back with another video very very soon. Bye!